the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon this fresh and may it bless those who view this holy scene of the Nativity of our Lord. Let us pray, O Lord, on this most holy of all nights, the night when your word was made flesh, a night when the animals and all the objects of nature sang praise unto you. As a symbol of the new creation of Christmas, we look to this evergreen tree, which remains vibrant throughout the winter months, awaiting the opportunity to the praise of the Son of God at his birth. Bless this Christmas tree. And may we be as vigilant as we await for your return. This we ask in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Christ Jesus. Amen. because God kept his promises to us. Braden, the lighting of the first candle.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go into the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the confidium this evening. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins. I am truly sorry for that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life and to improve and sanctify it, that I might become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority, Vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And the people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, announce salvation day after day. Tell God's glory among the nations, among all people, his marvelous deeds. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you make this holy night radiant with the splendor of Jesus Christ, the long-awaited Messiah. We welcome him as Lord, our light, the true light of the world. May he bring us to eternal joy in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. John. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burned them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. 
For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Tremble before God all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is King. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son. Today I am your father. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the field and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone <laughs> around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please speak soon.
may the name of Jesus be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Niech będzie pofolony Jezus Chrystus. Do you see what I see? A star. A star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. With a tail as big as a kite. These words are taken from the Christmas song, Do You See What I See? Written in 1962. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gather to mark the birth of a Savior. First of all, I wish to say to you, Merry Christmas. In Polish we say, which is translated in English to joy to the world on the birth of God. Being of Polish ancestry, Christmas Eve has always been very special to me, remembering the traditions that I learned as I grew. I remember how my Bafshi would have her entire family over for Vigilia, cooking one year for up to 22 people on a wood fire stove and plywood set up for supports for, on, for tables. In this tradition, I remember that before we began the meal, the father of the household would take the youngest child outdoors and look for the first star. And then upon seeing that first star, we would come back into the home and we would tell the mother, whether it was my Bafshi or my mom, and then in turn they would light a white candle placed in the center of the table to remind us of the importance of that night. And then we would begin our Christmas Eve dinner and share in the apotic or the Christmas wafer. Over the years, I've thought about the different aspects of Christmas. One of the most important aspects to me of the miracle of Christmas is significant of the star of Bethlehem. So this evening, let us reflect but for a moment on this star. Over many, many years, science and religion have pondered to the meaning of this star of Bethlehem or the Christmas star. There have been many opinions. One opinion was that it was a meteorite, but a meteorite flashes through the sky very quickly and is gone before we know it. Someone has also proposed that it might have been a comet, but a comet too lasts for a period of time and it would not have lasted as long as it would have taken the Magi to travel from Persia to the Holy Land. Some have said that it might have been a nova or a supernova, but with these two occurrences, they would have stayed fixed in the sky and not traveled like we read and have read in the Holy Scripture. The most scientific explanation of the star of Bethlehem is a conjunction of, of planets located in various constellations. You know, modern day astronomers can actually travel back in time to view what the sky was like with the conjunction of the planets in the various constellations around the time that Jesus was born. But one of the problems of dating the star of Bethlehem is the actual time of the birth of Jesus. Some believe that Jesus was born with modern name calendars on December 25th in the year one. But there are problems with this because Herod the Great died between six and four BC and he was the one that gave the order that all male children two years and under would be put to the sword. Dealing 
with the conjunction of the planets, looking back in the skies at that time of Jesus' birth, we see that there was a special conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Venus around the birth of Jesus in the year 4 to 2 BC. And that these two planets in conjunction were found in the constellation of Leo with the star Regulus being the brightest star which is about 78 light years from Earth. You know, talking of the wise men, to the Persian, Persians, the land of the Magi, the conjunction of planets would have had a very spiritual meaning. You know, Babylonian astronomy actually goes back to 1800 BC. And the Magi, who were considered priests, saw this conjunction of Jupiter which represented to them fatherhood and kingship, conjuncted with Venus, the morning star, which they believed and represented motherhood. It is also interesting that the star Regulus, which is the brightest in the constellation of Leo, was believed by the Babylonians to represent Israel, the Lion of Judah, and that the star Regulus also represented royalty. It is no surprise that the Magi who saw the signs in the universe began their trek following a star which led them to the Christ child. You know this past Monday on December 21st there was a special conjunction of two planets Jupiter and Saturn which has been called some by some the star of Bethlehem and it has not been seen for over 800 years. So what is the significance of the conjunction of these two planets, Jupiter and Saturn? When these two planets line up in conjunction, they were on the same day as the winter solstice, the longest and the darkest day of the year, and then they actually formed a double planet with greater illumination. For those who had viewed it back in the days of Jesus, they would have seen it as a double star due to its greater illumination. You know, the Jews rejected astrology, but the Persian priest understood its meaning. In the ancient world, all heavenly bodies were called stars. But after pondering on the importance of the star of Bethlehem, the final explanation of this star is that it was a manifestation from God. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we read that God created the heavens and the earth. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, we read that God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser night, light to rule the night. And he created the stars. To the people of ancient times, the star reminded them of an invisible God who manifested himself in all things. I believe that the star of Bethlehem was real. It was a sign from God that ushered in a new beginning where God announced the birth of his son to the world. Maybe God is showing himself to us this evening to remind all of us that he is present among us, among and amid all the chaos. Do we not read of Jesus in the beginning of John's Gospel? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we gather this evening and we recall the angel appearing unto the shepherds, and the star appearing in the night sky, you know, amid all the sadness that our world has experienced this past year. 
It is my prayer that we all might be strengthened in our faith and that we might find that eternal star that shines brightly within each and every single one of us. May we celebrate the birth of the one who brought hope, peace, joy, love and an understanding to all those who live and still live in the shadow, in the darkness of poverty, homelessness, unemployment and sickness. And may my brothers and sisters the light of that Christmas star bring a light unto all of us as the Magi saw that light to find the place of his birth within us. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice before the Lord who comes who comes to govern the earth, to govern the world with justice, and the people with faithfulness.
sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation. By our communion with God made man, may we become more like him who joins our lives to yours. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. You who sent us, Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, most holy. Mother Mary, we have come to know and love your holy and perfect will, Father, through the revealed mystery of the incarnation of your more blessed Son. We praise you, Father, and through your Son now made visible, we long to be with you, our unseen God. Therefore, we join with the voices of the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Tonight in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the homeless, the hungry, the unemployed. Let us remember in prayer and pray for all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and their families. Let us remember in our prayers all abused and neglected children in our world as well as for all victims of violence both here and abroad and for those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad and finally for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and on their own for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you the living eternal and true god we join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, 
and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them unto himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so great for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty of your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered to a holy sacrifice and met with host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with laws patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, Grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this commingling and consecration 
of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Please be seated. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but upon the faith of your church. And granted peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master. Awaken in us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> Let us recite the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
to do, I begot you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, in receiving this Eucharist, we rejoice in the birth of our Savior. May we share his life completely by living as he had taught. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lo, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life. Life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing and by, by but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love thanks, thanks be to god My dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered to offer Holy Mass on the solemnity of the Nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Parish Committee of Holy Name of Jesus, Polish National Catholic Church, and myself personally as pastor, we extend best wishes that you and your loved ones might have a very Merry Christmas and that the new year might bring health, peace, happiness, and prosperity. May God be with all of us this evening as we view this most holy crash in which we are reminded of light coming into darkness. May God bless all. We will conclude this evening with a prayer for one another as well as the prayer for the, our intentions that we have offered during this Holy Mass. And finally, we offer prayer for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters. Before the prayer, I wish to thank our organist, Barbara Stahelski, for doing a wonderful job in, in her music selections. Peg, I wish to thank you as the president of the Ladies Adoration Society who offered the Christ child and placed the Christ child into the creche. I wish to thank Shirley Medlitsky for offering the readings for the lighting of the Christ candle, as well as for John Harrington, who offered the readings this evening. And of course, um, Santa and Mrs. Claus, this is something that we have done over the years. And um, it, it kind of brings the spirit of Christmas 
and what Santa really um, is a symbol of, the giving of gifts and love to one another. And finally, to my brother Braden, who served this evening, may God be with all of us. May God watch over all of us this evening. May God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.